So into this video, we're going to be talking about the Sony a7C Mark II, the Sony a7C R, and the brand new 16 to 35 millimeters f2.8 lens G Master version 2 that Sony is going to be announcing this month. And right over here, I have a camera that is going to depict exactly what we should expect from the Sony a7C Mark II, the R. I'll tell you why, coming right up. I'm gonna address that elephant in the room right now. So the announcement as per Sony Alpha rumor, which happens to be spot on with the latest announcement of the Sony A6700, is going to be August 29th. So that's a little bit earlier than when I thought Sony was going to be um, announcing this camera, to be honest with you, but why not? If the camera is ready, they are gonna wanna go and they're gonna wanna go hard with three announcements. The first one is gonna be the Sony A7C Mark II. And, you know, when talking about this camera, we can actually estimate what that camera is going to be. You know, in other words, it's going to be pretty much a Sony a7 IV rehoused in this same, same body. But before I continue, I want to tell you some of the things that you can expect in the Sony a7C Mark II and also in the Sony a7C R. And that is going to be ergonomics and functionality. The Sony a7C II and R are gonna be cameras that are gonna be way superior than what they were before in terms of ergonomics. Now, the A6700 is a camera that I said I wasn't gonna get until I actually got to try the camera and I'm sorry, um, I was very wrong. This camera is unbelievable and the implementation of the body, the new grip, and the dials in the back by far is the best implementation that Sony has done in any camera, perhaps even in any full frame camera, big body as well. So I want to walk you through the difference between the Sony a7C Mark I versus the Sony a7C Mark II. Let's just call this one the Mark II or the R because pretty much what you see here is what you're going to be getting. Now, the most obvious one is going to be the grip. At the top, I have the Sony a7C Mark I and at the bottom, I have the Sony a7, A6700. And as you can see, the grip is way, way deeper one than another. So that is going to um, be a big plus because a lot of the times when using this camera with larger lenses, you know, this tiny little uh, grip, it makes you wish that you have a little bit more to grip on. And uh, we're finally gonna have it. Now, Sony has done a great job in this camera. And one of the things that I wanna showcase is the control of the dial that you can actually operate with your thumb only. So you have this mode right here to switch from photo, video, and SNQ simply rolling your dials, and then even the mode dial can actually be changed with your thumb. Now, in the Sony a7C Mark I, you have an independent dial right here, then you have a dial that is the exposure compensation that cannot be configured, and when you're in manual mode, this dial is useless, and when you wanna change mode, you actually have to reach in with two fingers to change the mode, and uh, they actually have knocked this out of the park. It's a lot more usable, it makes more sense, and pretty much you can operate three dials without even knowing that you're operating those three dials. You know, it comes second nature. Now, this dial right here, which, you know, in the prior version was set as an exposure compensation, is now going to be a customizable dial. Sony has done that in a lot of the other bodies that they have released, so that's actually awesome. Now, one thing that is also gonna be very clear, and sorry that I have the sensors exposed, but I just wanna show you the body alone with no interruptions, but, this is the Sony a7C Mark II, let's call it, because it's the Sony A6700, and this one is the Mark I. So in the Mark I, we don't have a front dial. In the Sony a7C Mark II, we are gonna have a front dial and also for the R. So when it comes to dial control, you're now gonna be able to control the exposure triangle with three dials, which is something that I wished you know, we had from the beginning, but finally, we are gonna have that. Now, the other thing that we're gonna have is the brand new screen, and the screen is not gonna be higher resolution than prior screen, but we may see something different in the R version. So this one has the brand new menu, touch control, and also has the brand new swipe control menu that allows you to access more functions by simply swiping up or down or to the side. So that's actually a pretty good implementation in my book because it's almost like having more buttons. Now, one thing that you cannot do yet is you cannot customize these buttons. You know, they pop there and it is what it is. You know, you cannot customize those guys. Hopefully via firmware Sony can address that because it will be really nice or maybe by the release of this camera, you'll be able to customize those. Um, that's that's going to be really good. 
So when you compare both cameras in terms of accessibility and ergonomics and control, the Sony a7C Mark II and the R are gonna be superior cameras in every single way. And the fact that now you can control the camera by touching the screen, that's also gonna be a perfect camera for solo shooting. And, uh, you know, I try shooting with the Sony uh, a6700 and, you know, this camera actually performs really, really good. I have a video coming about this camera after this one, so stay tuned. When it comes to features, you know, it is safe to say that Sony will actually pretty much rehouse the Sony a7 IV into the same body that you see right here with the same button. So we are gonna have the same video specs. Um, I wonder how the 60p is going to handle in a smaller body. But on this APS-C sensor uh, camera, the A6700, I can record until the body depletes and I don't even see the uh, overheating warning, of course, when shooting here in my studio. Now, Sony perhaps is going to implement some dissipation because we're gonna be dealing with 33 megapixel with that camera. Now, let's talk a little bit about price because the price of the camera I mentioned before, the Sony A7C Mark II, is going to be at around $2,000, maybe 2100 ish Dollars and yes, Sony is going to increment the price on that camera. Now, when you take a look at this camera right here, the Sony A6700, this camera comes at $1,400. And if Sony wants to play the same thing that they did with the Sony FX3 and the FX30 line, well, the FX3 costs you $3,800, where the Sony FX30 costs you $1,800. So almost double the price from APS-C to full frame. So. I don't think that Sony will do exactly the same thing in this camera, go double the price, but most likely they're gonna go 50% of the price of the Sony A7C Mark II when jumping to the Sony A7CR. So that could be at around $3,000. Now let's talk about the features that we should expect in the Sony A7CR, because that camera is gonna have a higher megapixel and most likely we're gonna have kind of like a mini Sony A7R5, so we're gonna have that 61 megapixel sensor, and once again, same video specs, you know, 4K video. Perhaps in this version, up to 120 frames per second. Once again, I don't know how the implementation is going to be, but one of the things that I think Sony is gonna be doing in this camera, or at least try to do, is when it comes to storage, you know? A lot of people have said it before, it is time for Sony to give us a secondary, SD card in this type of bodies. And the Sony A7C may be the one with one single SD card and the Sony A7CR may be the one with dual SD card slots. Probably if Sony cannot put a dual SD card slots, maybe they may do for the first time a built-in memory. Now I have a Leica M11 and it features a 64 gigabytes of memory and the M11 monochrome, I believe it has 256 or 100 and, uh, 28, something like that. But, you know, Sony manufactures the one of the best SD cards, so why can't they just put that SD card in the main board and be done with it, right? So, of course, you know, if something goes wrong, what do you do with that? But if the processor goes wrong, it's, you know, you're still out of a camera anyway. So, um, there are gonna be features as well that are gonna be different. And I think that the Sony A7C Mark II is going to have a shutter speed at one over 4,000 of a second, like we have it in this camera, the version one. The Sony A7C Mark II may have the same one over 4,000 of a second mechanical and one over 8,000 when switching to the uh, electronic uh, shutter, which is something that you also have in the Sony A7C Mark I. Now, on the Sony A7CR, we may see one over 8,000 of a second mechanical, and in my opinion, if the price is higher, Sony may actually add one over 16,000 of a second when engaging the electronic shutter. Again, that's something that I have in my Leica M11, and I don't have to worry ever again bringing in the filters because a one over 16,000 of a second, I can handle a lens of f1.4 aperture, you know, in the brightest condition ever and never needing to stop down with an ND filter. So that, in my opinion, is gonna be really good. So the main difference are gonna be price at around $1,000, uh, shutter speed mechanical from 4,000 to one over 8,000, expandable in the electronic to one over 6,000. I think that that's what they're gonna be pulling off, or at least that's what they should do. And we're gonna have the same ergonomics. If you actually look at the body we have at the top, now we have new buttons. We have a new C, uh, custom C button that we 
uh, can configure. Uh, the back of the camera remain almost the same. It's almost identical as the prior version. So this one is the A6700 here and the Sony A7C Mark one at the bottom. So as you see, the buttons may be uh, pretty much the same, but we now gain this uh, side button right here that I have set up for the white balance. So again, better ergonomics for both camera and access to the dials and control. Uh, the touchscreen that's gonna allow us to have more menus, um, perhaps dual SD storage or internal and single SD card slot and the you know faster shutter speed in this camera. The R may also have the one over 120 frames per second, um, 10 bit, 422 in 4K. My opinion, it is about time that Sony, you know, nails it because they have done such an incredible job with the Sony A6700. You know, for a lot of people, this camera can be way be a professional camera and the one camera that you use for everything, your professional work, your A camera, the one camera that you relied on, for video and photography. So the Sony A7C is gonna be, um, R2 is gonna be a step higher from this because you're gonna have a full frame sensor. So you're gonna have that greater low light capability. All your full frame lenses are gonna have, you know, greater shallow depth of field than this sensor right here. And of course, you know, if you already own uh, full frame glass, you know, the Sony A7C line seems like kind of like a no brainer. But for a lot of people that wants to get into the, uh, Sony ecosystem, I think the Sony 6700 is still gonna be a better option in terms of what you get for the money. $1,400 for this body and, you know, talking about the other ones, $2,000 and perhaps $3,000. So the other news, and this is the last one, is that Sony is gonna be releasing a brand new lens. So we can expect the 16 to 35 F 2.8 version two to be a little bit smaller than the version two of the 24 to 70 uh, F 2.8. Uh, G Master lens, you know, it's a lot lighter, a lot smaller. So when comparing the version two from the 24 to 70 and this 16 to 35, I think we're gonna have a much smaller lens and that's gonna be probably ideal. And for a lot of people that do that vlogging uh, thing, that's probably gonna be the go-to lens for a lot of videos like that and on the go, you know, having that 16 to 35. Now with the R, you're gonna have the advantage that when cropping, you're not gonna lose resolution or a lot of resolution when it comes to photo, because if they use that 61 megapixel, you're gonna have more than enough resolution to crop into APS-C and expand the reach of your glass. So I think I did it. One take, I'm not gonna edit this video. So let me know your thoughts down here, guys. And until then, I will see you in the next video.